Marshall. Thank you, Lauren. So uh, I want to speak briefly about uh, local distributed high throughput computing. Uh, so our, um, I lost my focus, there we go. So the topics I really want to cover today is uh, to talk about where we place distributed high throughput computing in the, in the larger OSG. Uh, and after that, uh, perhaps not in order, we will define what we mean by distributed high throughput computing. And I think perhaps the, the biggest thing I'd, I'd like uh, people to take away from this talk is to understand why, why local distributed high throughput computing is, is not an oxymoron, and why that makes sense and, and why that, that has value to uh, campuses and researchers. So we haven't talked too much about the OSG yet, but we'll talk tr uh, tremendous about it later. So I just kind of wanted to place us where we are. Uh, fundamentally, the OSG is, is pretty straightforward. It's just about sharing resources. So many campuses uh, in the OSG, but not all, uh, have local machines. Some have, have no local resources and they're still part of the OSG. So what happens when you have uh, fewer jobs uh, than machines or what happens when you have uh, more jobs uh, than machines? And that's really where the OSG comes in. These are a map that you're gonna see a whole lot of uh, the next two days. Uh, and this is a list of the, the, the OSG sites, uh, which is probably always a little bit out of date. And with the OSG, uh, we make it possible to uh, use all these remote sites uh, in an easy way. You can use them without knowing uh, where exactly they are or which batch system they're running or having any uh, individual credentials for each of these hundred some odd sites or even explicitly saying, well, uh, I have access to hundreds of jobs, a hundred sites and I'm gonna send these jobs there and these jobs there and these jobs there. Uh, and uh, on the other side, on the flip side, uh, with the OSG, we also uh, make it easy to accept uh, remote jobs from, uh, from foreign places. So with this, if you look at each of these dots, while we call them sites, really each of these are local distributed high, throu high throughput computing systems. Uh, and you can add your uh, site to this or you can use remote ones. And so the rest of this talk will be really uh, less about OSG and more about uh, local distributed high throughput computing. Now, uh, when we talk about distributed computing, we always have to remember this, this quote from Leslie Lamport, which is I think 40 years old now, where he said a distributed computing, uh, he defined it as one where you can't get any work done because a machine you never heard of crashes. And this is something we always have to keep in the back of our head when we think about distributed computing, that is really often about reliability. It's more about reliability than, than performance. We always want to think about this uh, at every level where we're working on distributed systems. So what software uh, can you use to build your local distributed high throughput computing? Well, uh, there's good news and, and bad news here. Uh, the good news is that OSG can work with uh, a large number uh, of local software stacks to build uh, a, a local a local compute capacity, uh, Slurm, LSF, PBS, Grid Engine, Condor. Uh, and the bad news is uh, you have a lot of potential choices. Again, that same list there. Uh, we would think that HT Condor may be uh, the, the best solution for your local DHTC if you're starting from scratch, but that doesn't mean that if you have an existing Slurm cluster uh, that you can't use it today. Uh, I think Condor may be best if you're starting from scratch or, or if you have more general needs, but that doesn't mean we, we only work with Condor. Now, remember with OSG, there's always uh, two data flows. There's jobs coming into your site and jobs uh, leaving your site running elsewhere. And to accept uh, incoming jobs, all you need is a compute entry point in front <clears throat> of your local batch system. And the OSG operation people can even run this for you. This doesn't need, even need to run on premise. So it's very easy uh, to accept jobs from, from remote people uh, given the right permissions. And to export jobs, to send jobs, uh, if you have more jobs than machines, uh, all you need is a, a counter submit point. And again, this submit point, while it can be at your local site, it doesn't need to be. Uh, the OSG can also run this for you uh, via a service we call uh, OSG Connect. And this whole uh, software stack uh, works best when you have a local Condor pool. And uh, let me get into that now. And when we think about Condor, when we design Condor, um, we, start, uh, we start with people. We don't start with thinking about interconnects and petabytes of storage and storage networks and compute, but we really wanna start uh, with people uh, because people have problems. Uh, maybe not these uh, little undergraduates from, from the before times, um, but people like uh, this chemistry student here, 
uh, this chemistry student has problems and you can tell uh, she's a good chemistry student because she's actually looking at a mic uh, microscope here, not fiddling with uh, a computer or, or trying to do uh, computational chemistry. She's actually doing real actual work. Some of her problems might look like this. Uh, she has some computational chemistry problem uh, and it will take three years to complete on her, her laptop, uh, but she really wants to submit a paper sooner than that. Another problem might be um, that she has, uh, uh, if she could have access to a tremendous amount more computing, she couldn't just get her existing done, existing work done faster, but she could revolutionize her field if she just had three orders of magnitude more compute. Or another problem she has is maybe she has uh, different kinds of jobs. Some jobs that need more memory than others, some uh, need uh, more compute. Uh, these are the sort of compute problems that are very common uh, for computational researchers. But that's not the only kind of person uh, who has problems on a campus. Uh, believe it or not, this guy, our dean of LNS, uh, has problems. Um, but he has different kinds of problems. Uh, he funds uh, a lot of, uh, indirectly or directly, uh, a lot of computing resources on campus. And his goal is he wants these machines that he's spent a lot of money for that are quickly depreciating to always be busy uh, doing some kind of research. Uh, if it's not immediately the research for their goals to, to backfill them with some other things, he wants to always be computing uh, on these machines. Uh, and uh, he wants some sort of fairness or some sort of policy about how these machines are used. If the physics department has invested twice as much as the chemistry has, maybe they should get twice the computing. Uh, so these are some of the, the needs that uh, he thinks it is. Now, that may not, these needs may change over time. For example, uh, despite what we just said about physics and chemistry, maybe there's a really important group that needs all of the computers for some very short deadline to do something important. He'd like the ability to do that policy uh, as well. And so um, HT Condor helps manage uh, the computing and the policy that these two different groups want. The jobs have some constraints uh, on the provider of the machines. And the provider of the machines also has some constraints that, that affects the job. And what Condor does fundamentally is Condor manages, manages these constraints. Uh, it uh, allows us to um, have written policies that allow us to harmonize and, and, and coordinate these constraints uh, even when they conflict. And we can define who wins uh, in the face uh, of a conflict. But in the real world, it's not even that easy because we don't just have one person who has jobs or one, even one provider of machines. We have lots of users of jobs, maybe from different departments or, or different needs. And we have lots of providers on campus. Um, maybe there's a, a traditional rack of machines or uh, maybe there's a, a group that has money and can lease machines from the cloud. Or maybe there's a group that has an allocation on a, a high performance computing supercomputer somewhere that they, they wanna to bring to the competition. So there's always this big mix um, of resource providers uh, in the system. And we wanna be able to harmonize and use all of these. And I think one particular um, kind of resource that, that maybe is, is particularly useful right now is uh, unused desktops. Now that pretty much most of us are working from home, there's a, a huge number of idle machines in uh, libraries and computer labs and people's desktops that are sitting idle that could be used to promote research on campus. And this is an area that the Condor was originally designed for and is still deep within our DNA. And I would encourage uh, administrators today to think about how we can utilize these resources that are currently sitting idle or, or maybe mostly idle. So this problem, we have many resources, many resource providers, many resource users, and it's fundamentally a distributed problem. And I really want to reiterate, it's distributed not just because the machines are in different places, but it's distributed because people are distributed and people have different wants and needs. Um, and we need to distribute the policy of all these things into one federated resource that can, that can harmonize these uh, discrete uh, policies. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's distributed even on one campus or even in one machine room. You might have different users and different kinds of machines. And thus, this is why we call this local distributed high throughput computing. 
it's local to a campus or local to a machine room or local to a building maybe, but it's still distributed and it's still high throughput computing. So the goal of HT Condor is to reduce all these various policies that people have in their mind down to some written executable policy and to distribute those concerns to where they belong. If there's a policy about a particular machine, Condor has a service that runs on that machine that implements that policy. If there's a policy that applies to a job, it's attached to the job. We don't have one centralized global service uh, that tries to implement all these because they're fundamentally distributed by their nature and they're always coming, on, coming and going. So our goal then is to be declarative and not imperative and let the system make all the decisions. So how does Condor do this? Well, it's very scalable first thing. Now, a lot of people think about scalability in terms of being able to scale up to humongous numbers and Condor pools can, <coughs> excuse me, Condor pools can scale up to hundreds of thousands of machines, but it's also really important that we scale down. So a Condor pool can scale down to a size of zero, zero worker nodes. And this is useful and is even used today. So uh, you can have a SMIT point that has no local machines attached to it that maybe later you want to add machines to via the cloud or via the OSG. Uh, and one of our busiest sites, OSG Connect, is essentially a site with zero machines. So we're very proud of this ability to scale both up and down and we find it very useful. Connor also gives you first class support for workflows of DAG. So you don't just have uh, a set of jobs, but jobs can have dependencies and to be able to run only one, one uh, input job completes. Uh, Condor also has support for ephemeral workers, workers that come and go. And of course we can work uh, with or, or without a shared file system. So very abstractly, a Condor pool may look like this. Um, we support multiple submit points. So one way we get this large scalability is sort of uh, what we call horizontal scalability, where you can add uh, multiple submit points. And we of course support multiple workers and each of those workers can potentially have a different policy. Again, based on the wants and needs of the person who provides that machine. So we attach policy, maybe different policy to each of these different kinds of machines. Uh, you'll notice that one machine may be uh, different than another, maybe has bigger memory or more, more uh, GPUs or something like that. And uh, these machines can come and go. Uh, Condor supports uh, machines disappearing from the pool and Condor will automatically restart jobs that were running on the machine that crashed or went away or was reused by policy for something else. Maybe it was a desktop machine that someone came back to use. And new machines can be added to the pool. Maybe they're turned on or maybe they're acquired via OSG or Amazon or some other things. So when we talk about DHTC, uh, DHTC really stands for distributed high throughput computing. But I also like the idea that it may stand for dynamic high throughput computing because we support this very dynamic machine, this dynamic system where machines can come and go, but the system as a whole keeps going. Of course, we also attach policy to jobs there because those are what the people who submit the jobs need. And with this, with the policy attached to jobs, with this declarative nature, with the dynamic nature of machines that come and go and be able to submit to various different places, uh, we come up with our mantra of submit locally, but run globally. So we need to be able to uh, submit a job at one place that declares where it is, that declares uh, what it needs, and the user doesn't tell the job where to run. The user doesn't say, oh, run on my machine in the basement or run on the OSG machine that's in the state of Idaho. Uh, the user just declares what they want. And the system then, uh, based on this declarative information, decides where it can go subject to all these policies. So we call this submit locally, run globally. And even if we're just talking about a local DHTC system, uh, run globally can mean uh, run anywhere on campus or run on different racks or, um, or run uh, on different kinds of machines, even on, on our local campus. So we believe very strongly that you'd be able to submit locally. And from this one Connor Smith point, uh, the system takes care of deciding where to run it. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to finish by showing our kind of uh, vision uh, 50 years later 
of what distributed system should be. Uh, we think a distributed system is one where you where you can get work done on a machine you've never heard of. And this is what DHTC and, and especially the OSG uh, can give for you. And we can do this uh, even when it crashes. So uh, to summarize, uh, we've got a lot more information about Condor on our website, htcondor.org or the opensciencegrid.org. Uh, and we've, if you really want to go into much more detail about Condor, we've been uh, publishing a bunch of YouTube talks uh, on YouTube. You can just search for Center for High Throughput Computing on YouTube and you'll get our channel, which has something like uh, a dozen talks on it. Uh, 